All right, welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Group, and I have a super special guest with me today. Uh, his name's Dr. Judson Somerville. He's a medical doctor. Uh, he's also a seventh generation Texan. I, that, that's so cool. I mean, Texas is like the place to be these days, Texas and Arizona and Florida and who knows with, with what's going on in the world today, but we're gonna share with you some really life-changing information regarding vitamin D. He has been researching vitamin D for years and years and years, written a book called The Optimal Dose. And uh, it's a pleasure to have him on today. Um, he's been involved, I tell you what, his, I'm gonna let him tell his life story or, or, or some of it because it's pretty fascinating. And he's been helping people for over 20 years as well, just like I have. So welcome to the show, Dr. Judd, Dr. Dr. Somerville. It's good to have you. Thank you, Dr. Group. I uh, really appreciate you inviting me and being here. Um, yes, I, um, where to start? Uh, growing up, my mom was always stuffing me full of vitamins, cod liver oil. People of my generation probably remember that stuff. Uh, only now do, did I find out that it's a, if you take too much, it's a toxic dose of vitamin A. Um, so anyway, a couple times in my life, I used to raise bees and I got stung once and uh, I appreciated or learned how, how valuable and how effective zinc is at reducing inflammation because there's nothing like a puffy face trying to go on a date in high school. And then later I did triathlons and... Uh, my diet changed and I started eating less and less meat and I started getting really, really fatigued. And at first I couldn't figure it out. And then I finally uh, figured out that it was uh, vitamin B12 deficiency supplemented with that and bingo. So I had a couple, you know, episodes of my life, minor stuff. Then I, I got a chemical engineering degree at the University of Texas. Um, then went to medical school at, uh, I think it's the McGowan Medical School, called the McGowan Medical School in Houston. Then did my residency up at uh, University of Massachusetts. And I uh, did two years of general surgery, then went into uh, anesthesiology. About a month into my residency, I was in a bicycle accident that left me paralyzed from my chest down. And uh, I um, developed an autoimmune disease. I started getting swelling in my legs uh, about six months after my accident. And um, they did everything they could to try to diagnose it and they never really could find, they, they thought it might have been heterotrophic ossification, um, but that didn't really fit my symptoms. Um, eventually, um, years go by, I uh, get that under control with the anti-inflammatory. Um, then in 2002, I was bitten by a brown recluse spider, and uh, it really wrecked havoc. I ended up with necrotizing fasciitis uh, in my left leg. My, I was bitten in the, in the thigh, and... Um, they finally got that under control, you know, was life flighted from Laredo where I was practicing at the time doing pain management over to Houston. They got that under control. But over the years, um, I just, despite the best efforts of Western medicine, it just wasn't enough. And then about 11 years ago, I realized I had about three to five years to live if I didn't do something. And I kind of was racked my brain because Western medicine just didn't have an answer and at least not one that any of my doctors could find um and so then I thought back to my mom and stuff me full of vitamins and stuff and I remember reading an article I can't remember if it was the New York Times or Wall Street Journal about how vitamin D had all these effects other than just you know being a vitamin and so I started taking that I uh went to a lecture uh by um uh Gormanak Dr. Gormanak and kind of opened my eyes because I've been experimenting with higher doses, but it kind of let me realize that, you know, that what we were being told as the RDA was not anywhere close to what we needed. I started taking high dose vitamin D, um, then uh, put my patients on it. And I used her protocol, which was 20,000 units a day uh, for six to eight weeks and then go to 10,000. Myself and all my patients realized we felt a lot worse when we went back to 10,000, put everybody back on 20,000, and then um, went to 30,000 and found that that was indeed the optimal dose. Don't mean to give away the ending at the beginning, but, and so it changed my life, really saved my life, and uh, we can get into more later, but it's just 
to me amazing, amazing the differences made in my life. Well, it's always good to hear those stories. Vitamin D has been in the news a lot lately, especially over the last couple of years. And I've always been a big time fan of, of vitamin D, which isn't really a vitamin, is it? No, it's not. It's uh, um, actually a hormone. And a, a lot of people don't realize that it was misnamed when it was originally uh, found. And in fact, um, somebody once asked me this. And at the time, I didn't know the answer is what was vitamin D1? And in fact, there's no such thing. It was a combination of D2 and D3. So it's actually a seco hormone and it's derived from cholesterol, uh, kind of like the other steroids in our body. So tell, uh, tell everybody with your experience, what have you seen with people? How did you benefit from it? What are some of the benefits that you've seen in your practice? Um, what does it do in the system? Give us some inside information. All right, that's a dangerous question because you know me, I like to talk, so here goes. Um, the three major effects I think that vitamin D does is uh, one is sleep. It restores your sleep and um, you have to take magnesium with it, okay? That's critically important because vitamin D uses a ton of magnesium and as one of my friends said, uh, you know, vitamin D is kind of the, the, the king and, and uh, magnesium is like the bishop. Um, so it's super important for sleep and keeping you sleep because when you're deep, deep asleep, you need to be totally paralyzed except for your breathing. And the reason for that, I believe, is so that you, you can, the stem cells can repair um, the parts of your body. And for some reason, you need to be motionless to do that. Also, it allows your brain to reorganize your thoughts and um, um, so that you can think quicker and, and, and learn, essentially. The second effect, I think, um, is uh, metabolism, because I've seen lots and lots of people um, lose weight and, and, or gain weight, get back essentially to their ideal body weight. And maybe want to touch on this later, because um, I could go off on so many rabbit holes. Um, but I think it all has to do with gut health. And I know you have some products, uh, you know, and I've used some and I, and I like them uh, concerning gut health. But I think trying to get that microbiome balanced again and uh, your immune system and, and such. And like I say, it's, it's just a lot to explain there. So I'll just touch on it right now. And then the last, which I think uh, certainly in these days and ages is most critical, is its immune function. It's critical in the immune function. And um, there's cells called dendritic cells, and there's also an innate and an adaptive immune system. The innate is kind of the more primitive uh, immune system, and innate is like uh, T killer cells and uh, antibodies. And so, um, if you don't have enough vitamin D, your your immune system doesn't work properly, and in fact, you end up with cytochrome storms. You end up with, I think. But one of the causes of, of diseases like autism, I think you end up with the diseases, autoimmune diseases, because basically your, your gut's out of balance because I believe the vitamin D manipulates through, there's like 150 to 200 million nerves in your alimentary tract. That's from your mouth to your anus. And those between those nerves and um, your immune system, it determines basically, uh, I believe, what you eat. That's why you get cravings for certain foods because you just need certain nutrients. And it also determines what bacteria flourish and what you're suppressed. And a lot of uh, the, the bacteria in our, our gut produce um, chemicals like serotonin, GABA. They also produce a lot of the B vitamins and uh, vitamin K2. And so it's really important to for our, our body's health and, and, uh, and more and more they're starting to appreciate that medical, you know, science is starting to catch up with that. They just haven't realized how critically important vitamin D is for it. And um, so anyway, the other thing is like for um, COVID right now and all the stuff that's going on with it, um, vitamin D is critically important. And as I talk about in my book, one of the, I used, I put all my patients on it, uh, one, just to get them healthy, but two, for sleep, and the other was for bone health, which is the thing that most people know about vitamin D, um, because I believe a lot, a lot of chronic pain 
especially spinal pain, is due to microfractures in the spine, which nobody seems to want to address or, or has addressed. Anyway, um, so I was having all, I had all my patients on it, on the dose, like I say, the, what I consider the optimal dose, 30,000 units a day. And this was right at the tail end of the swine flu back in 2010. And um, there were two patients that were dying. And um, I put both of them on the vitamin D and both of them attributed it to saving their lives. Um, and one was my mom uh, because the swine flu was killing them and vitamin D, um, um, as according to them, uh, saved their life. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, and this again, not why I put patients on vitamin D, uh, Dr. Group, but um, I noticed that no one ever and, and to say that medicine is, is, is kind of almost idiotic because nothing ever is 100% effective, as you know. But no one ever, to my knowledge, got the flu again, ever. And there's like 202 different, uh, or 200 different, at least 200 different varieties of viruses that cause upper respiratory tract symptoms, flu-like symptoms. When I say flu, I'm just talking about the general flu symptoms. Because influenza, at least according to uh, some studies, only causes about 18% of flu symptoms, people with, you know, quote, that show up to the ER with flu. So I found that, you know, really remarkable. And so it has, I think it has a lot of applicability, applicability um, to the current situation we are in with COVID. Yeah, <clears throat> well, I definitely like going down deep, dark rabbit holes. I mean, I've been doing that for 25 years and trying to expose and at least educate people on what's really going on with the root cause of illness and root cause of disease. Since we're talking about the current situation that people have been going through um, over the last couple years, there has been a strain, I'll just pop into my head because uh, the last couple of weeks, especially, I've had, you know, more and more uh, responses to this. And then I've been talking to doctors and asking them the question about it. But apparently there's a, there's some sort of a weird thing going around with weight gain, especially with women over the age of 35 that have had COVID or that were exposed to, basically they had COVID. Uh, I personally don't know what's going on, but there's more and more people that are saying, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I had COVID six months ago. I had COVID twice. I had COVID three times. I mean, we're starting to find out these post-COVID um, symptoms that people are suffering from. And uh, most, most of our clientele is women over 35. I mean, guys aren't really yet so far into their health as much as women are, but we've been getting a lot of reports. And so I've been asking around, I've been asking other doctors too. It's like, are you seeing the same thing? And they're saying, yes, we are. We're seeing the same thing, like weight gain around the waist, no change in diet. And it's associated with post COVID. Um, so I know everyone is always asking about weight loss and, you know, how they can lose weight and deficiencies and diet. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but maybe if you could explain or go into a little bit more detail about how D is effective for weight loss or weight gain, if you need to gain weight. Most, most of the requests that we get are for weight loss. Right, right. Um, I, I love it. Uh, you know, I, I think you and I are like-minded. We love rabbit holes. We love, we wanna know the truth. We really don't care what it is as long as we get to the truth. Um, as far as that goes, because we don't like to say things that are not true. And like one of my professors once said uh, in medical school, half of what we are teaching you is wrong. We just don't know which half. So half of what I'm telling you may be wrong. I, I just don't know which half, but I certainly am striving to get you, give you the best information I have. Concerning weight loss, which is typically what most people are, are concerned about, um, I, I saw some miraculous results. Uh, men for whatever reason, and I haven't figured this out, if you got an idea on it, let me know, but men, um, and they have something to do with estrogen and testosterone, but men always are able to lose weight a lot more rapidly, and it may be muscle mass uh, than women are, and uh, I had probably a dozen guys that started what I call the optimal dose, and within three months lost 75 pounds. I mean, that's huge. And I have no idea why they in particular. Um, what I found is 
that most people, not all, most people lost about eight pounds a month until they got back to ideal body weight with a vitamin D. And what it does is I think several things. One, and the most important is, I mean, what, what destroys a diet? Why do diets fail? Okay, and you've got a million of them out there and, and you know, it's cut back on eating, you know, it's, or eat more. It's either cut back on eating or eat more stuff that's low caloric in order to fill your stomach or drink more water or whatever it is, at least my understanding of diets. Um, but what vitamin D does is it changes your appetite. It changes your appetite. If you think about a bear in the fall, what does it do? It gorges itself. Why? Because it needs to put on a lot of fat for the winter so it can survive, so it doesn't starve to death because food is a lot less available in the winter. Well, lots of mammals do that. And I think our body is programmed to do that. And I call it the winter syndrome. And what happens essentially is um, we get less sunlight. Our appetite goes way up. Our metabolism goes down 20 to 30 percent. And our fat absorption goes way up. Well, vitamin D does all the things that you want of a perfect diet pill. It restores your appetite to normal. It speeds up your metabolism 20 to 30%. And it blocks fat absorption for the fats that you don't need. Versus remember that when they came out with all those fat blockers, I don't know if they're still in the market or not. And they had all the cardiac issues and, and such like that. Well, I mean, vitamin D is a perfect fat pill. So what happens to bear? Okay, it gorges, it pigs out, gains a lot of weight, goes, hits the spring, and then, you know, um, initially it eats a lot because it's, you know, lost some muscle mass and such like that. But then it goes back to its ideal body weight because when you're trying to go out and gather food and such, it's not really beneficial to carry around a lot of extra weight you don't need. Well, essentially what we humans do and let me digress a second. Okay, if you think about the meals, at least in our northern hemisphere, because it's it's interesting. A lot of the people I get contacts from are from New Zealand, Indonesia, uh, Australia. So of course their seasons are flipped. But if you think about the meals that we eat during uh, during uh, quote unquote the fall and winter, is you know you think about Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. I mean, think how fatty and and high caloric those foods are that we eat during those times and everybody you know everybody but typically the you know there's that 10 or 15 pounds of weight gain over the winter and somehow miraculously in the spring it goes away well just that little bit of sun exposure that you get during the summer and spring is enough to to impact you and the, the little bit of difference because you're not getting very much typically because most people get almost all their vitamin d from sunshine uh, what little bit they do. And especially for people of color, it's really, really difficult because um, they need, you know, up to five times or more sunlight to get the same amount of vitamin D. So that's that. Uh, why would COVID? I think COVID, um, well, here's the interesting thing. And a lot of people don't know this. Cancer cells mutate to either increase the destruction of vitamin D or decrease its, the production of the active form. They affect the one alpha hydroxylase enzyme that converts the blood form of vitamin D into the active form, or they increase the 24 hydroxylase enzyme activity to destroy vitamin D. And so I think that COVID somehow is affecting the production of the active form and or the increasing the destruction of the uh, active form in order to reduce the amount of vitamin D because vitamin D is critical, like I said, for the immune system, particularly the dendritic cells uh, that recognize self from foreign. Anyway, I won't uh, we can discuss that later, but I think I bet you a dollar, not a million dollars, but I bet you a dollar it's, it has something to do with its effect on vitamin D3. So talking about sunlight, I know they did a study, I think it was like five or six years ago, I read it and they, they did, I've always been researching to geoengineering and the chemtrails and, and what's going on with that about how they're blocking the, the different rays to uh, produce the vitamin D naturally, the UVB rays. 
And I think they did a study on lifeguards. I think it was down in Florida that are out literally out in the sun all day long, every single day. And at the end of the study, they found that pretty much all of them, over 90% of them were still deficient in vitamin D. So basically what's been happening, what the, you know, most people think chemtrails and geoengineering projects are a conspiracy theory, but you can actually pull up geoengineering. It dates back to the 19, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s. I used it extensively during the Vietnam War. Uh, when I talk about geoengineering and chemtrails, it's spraying specific compounds into the air to block the sunlight. Do you, uh, and I agree, I, <clears throat> you know, I basically think, believe in 25 years of working with people that if I was to pick two things that 99% of the population were deficient in, it would be iodine and vitamin D. So I just kind of wanted to get your take on what, have you noticed the same thing happen over the years and, and why, <clears throat> why is it now that people can be in the sun and still not be able to, uh, uh, to, to manufacture the, the vitamin D3? And I, and I know also a big component of that is the personal uh, care products that they're lathering on their skin and the sunblocks that they're lathering on their skin, which absolutely makes zero sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I um I have a uh, website and I've uh, written a blog series about sunscreens and how wonderful wonderful they are for you. Um, yes, um, and it's interesting. I, I don't have the specific articles uh, uh, at hand, but um, back in the 30s or 40s, there was too much vitamin D supposedly in the food, so they started taking it out. And then they switched to vitamin D2, which is much, much less effective than vitamin D3. And then the other thing is that, um, you know, the current, um, what is it? Um, how is it? Public announcements, public uh, health announcements are avoid the sun and cut out salt. Well, how are you supposed to get vitamin D or how are you supposed to get iodine? And if you're deficient in iodine, it lowers your IQ. Okay, and in fact, there was a, uh, um, uh, it's on my Facebook group, somebody posted it, a uh, doctor that does a um, CME on iodine, showing that if you take um, 12 and a half milligrams a day during, well, you should anyway, but if you do during pregnancy, it will increase your child's IQ 20 points. And he makes the analogy of the Japanese. They, on average, take, I think, 13.7 or 13.8 milligrams a day because of all the seaweed they eat. And uh, you can see how intelligent they are, you know. Uh, and um, just because it, it, it uh, happens there doesn't mean it's a fact. But I think, you know, you could take a lot from that. So they cut those things out. The other thing that they cut out that a lot of people aren't aware of is boron. And boron is very, very important um, for bone health. In fact, in Israel, um, they have uh, a 0.5% incidence of uh, osteoarthritis. And the only reason they have that is because of immigrants, because there's so much in the soil and the water, in fact, that they have no osteoarthritis. And it's all related to boron. And I think what boron does is, is makes, well, one, it makes your bones really strong. And I think our bones are designed to absorb all the shock. When they're weak, I think our joints take so much more of it. And that's what causes them to wear down so much more rapidly and to have um, osteoarthritis. Now, I, I really, I guess I may not have answered your question properly. But yes, I think, you know, either it's just the really, really stupid uh, or it's intentional. But they're really, they are cutting out or trying to make it public health initiatives to eliminate nutrients that are critically important. I mean, you know, look at how bereft our foods are of the nutrients they need. So I, I you know, whether intentional or just, um, just sort of that stupid, they, they certainly are, it seems, trying to kill us. Yeah, I mean, they're attacking the sunlight, <laughs> they're poisoning the water, they're poisoning the air, they're poisoning the food, and the amount of toxins are exponentially getting larger, and the amount of times people are detoxing their body and clean, cleaning themselves up is getting smaller and smaller. But hopefully we're, I mean, that's why we're here. That's why we're here to change all that. Yes, um, yes. And it's, it, it's, 
it's amazing that the top three, let's say the top three things that we're dealing with in society today, as far as poor health, being um, immune deficiency, uh, mental health, you know, right now, pretty much every single person is going through an emotional roller coaster ride that I've talked to, whether it's they're going through uh, depression, anxiety, fear, anger, some sort of negative emotions, their immune system is down, they're living in a sympathetic state, they're having a hard time fighting off the flu. It seems, it's, it's, it's almost like vitamin D is a miracle substance that basically can take care of, I mean, in, you know, throw weight gain in there. I mean, how, many, how much money is spent on you know, controlling your weight every single year? It almost seems like it's, and I've always believed that it is kind of a miracle hormone. You know, hormones are always regulatory compounds that can just kind of, you know, help regulate multiple different things in the in the body. But uh, I know we've touched on immune. I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about in that. We've talked a little bit about weight loss, but I mean, what do you, what have you noticed over the years as far as any benefits uh, and, and I know this is linked to the gut. I'm so glad you mentioned the gut because the gut, I, I feel, is the brain of the body. It, it's connected to every single organ. But uh, I know you have so much experience also with people that have suffered from mental illness, you know, whether it's bipolar, whether it's anxiety, whether it's stress, whether it's depression, whether it's, you know, whatever it is. Can you tell us some stories about that? Maybe a little background on how vitamin D is beneficial for that? Uh, I'm glad you asked me that because that, um, you know, thank you are starting to pay more attention to it. But mental health is, I mean, by definition, critical, you know? I mean, you know, the mind and body are attached. And if your body's polluted, your mind's going to be polluted. And I, uh, where I trained, we used a tremendous amount of antidepressants. And when I moved to Texas, um, I had some trouble getting them approved because nobody understood why I was writing so many, okay, uh, for chronic pain. Because to me, um, the, one of the most disabling things about chronic pain is lack of deep restorative sleep. And I think if you don't get deep restorative sleep, it, it's not the only reason, but it's certainly critical for uh, mental health. And so anyway, I was the largest prescriber of antidepressants, uh, or one of the largest, it depended month to month, in the five state area. And so, I mean, I wrote, everybody got an antidepressant. And so once I started with the vitamin D, um, you know, I had everybody take magnesium, which is also, let me digress a second. Magnesium is basically, um, okay, endorphins and keflins are the body's natural painkillers. Magnesium is the body's natural angiolytic, which is a fancy word I use that just so you knew I was really a doctor. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a substance that relaxes you, okay? And um, let me digress one more step. I had a patient that was coming, and this is important because it's all mental health. I had a patient that was coming to see me, and he was going to ER two to three times a week for anxiety attacks. And I hit him with, you know, lorazepam, Xanax. I mean, everything and anything you could think of to try to help him with his anxiety. And, and he was making me nervous, which is hard to do. And um, I finally put him on magnesium and had him just take as much as he could tolerate. Never went back to the ER again. Okay. So anyway, back to the vitamin D. Um, I was the largest prescriber of antidepressants. I, uh, I love um, uh, omega-3s. And so I put all my patients, it was typically fish oil because they couldn't really afford krill. I prefer krill oil. Uh, but anyway, so a combination of 30,000 units of vitamin D3 a day and four grams of krill oil. And I'm not giving medical advice. Don't stop your antidepressant right now and start taking what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not telling you to do that. But what my experience was, I think I wrote two patients um, out of the thousands I saw after I started doing that antidepressants. All the rest, just the um, combination of uh, vitamin D3 and omega-3 was able to take care of that. And there's a lot of studies that show that uh, schizophrenia and some of these other mental health diseases may start based on a vitamin D deficiency, either interuterine or uh, interutero or uh, early in life. 
And so, you know, I don't know the dose to give kids. And I'm asked that some, I never treated them. I, I don't know what the proper dose is. Uh, it's probably uh, higher than the RDA because clearly with adults, the RDA, RDA doesn't, that's a recommended daily allowance. That's what the government dose the government tells us to take, but certainly not enough. So I basically think um, if you start taking it, and I also think a big part of uh, autism is uh, vitamin D deficiency in the mother during pregnancy and also in uh, the infant uh, because uh, for one, interuterine infections could cause autism. And then of course, um, high fevers and uh, maybe or maybe not. I know they say they discredit it, but I really think that all these uh, vaccines that give, especially the MMR, which is, I write about it in my book. I wrote a chapter about it. Um, and my theory is this, and it's a theory um, that, you know, you don't give, uh, okay, well, let me, how to present it. Okay. Basically you have an infant, he's vitamin D deficient. He or she is vitamin D deficient. And um, which in my but opinion- up, So what, what, just, just to clarify, what percentage of infants are vitamin D deficient? Jesus. I mean, based on what I think is the proper dose, 100%. 100%. And I think if you aren't taking, okay, let's go down that rabbit hole a second. You need at least, typically, unless you have a, uh, what is it, MTHFR, methyl, uh, what is it, methylfolate, oh, I'm blanking on it. Anyway, Unless you have that deficiency, uh, genetic defect, uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase gene deficiency, uh, typically it takes at least 10,000 units a day of vitamin D3 to get a physiological level of, of it, okay, of vitamin D3. And what is a physiological level? I believe that level is at least uh, 50 nanograms per ml. And I know I'm talking about doses, but really more important uh, is to have the blood levels in the proper range. And they say, quote unquote, normal is zero to 100. Now, recently I've seen more and more, it's 100 to 150, which I'd like to think I had something to do with because I believe the optimal dose is basically 100 to 150 nanograms per ml, which is 250 to uh, 400. Uh, nanomoles per liter for those that are in um, countries that use that system to measure the vitamin D3 levels. So you need at least physiological levels. And in checking thousands and thousands and thousands of people, uh, over 5,000 uh, different individuals while I was uh, treating them, I found only one person with a level above 50. I found two with levels or two or three with levels in 40 and everybody else was below that. And I found probably a dozen people uh, that had levels below 10, okay? Now I lived in, I practiced in Laredo, Texas. Now granted 98% were Hispanic, so they did have higher pigmentation, but we also have one of the sunniest places in the country. So, you know, um, vitamin D deficiency is just rampant. It's just rampant. And I think a lot of the reasons for the increased mental health issues, the anxiety issues, um, just all the health issues is, is because people don't have enough. And now I wanted to go touch back on a point because you're talking about lifeguards. Cause what I get thrown back at me a lot of times is, well, doctor, you know, the levels you're recommending are way, way higher than our ancestors used. Now I would like to argue that we don't have any clear indication exactly what their levels were. And even if you go find some primitive tribe somewhere, I'm not sure that they, like they are with a lot of our nutrients, deficient. I think that probably the closest any group, if you could have measured them to having the ideal level, the optimal level would be the Inuit because of their diet. And right now, and I've been trying, I don't know, I should write them, but there's a, there, right now there is a epidemic of suicides going on, especially among the young people and the Inuits because they've changed their diet. And they used to eat things like muktuk, which is, uh, I think, seal or, or whale skin uh, and blubber. And it's super high in vitamin D and omega-3s. So it's basically an antidepressant pill. And they took it away from them. And now they're killing themselves because they grew dependent 
on it's like a star trek series where the people grew dependent on a certain substance and they took it away and bingo they all get sick so um i think it's i kind of i believe we live in the garden of eden everything we need is there we're just not using it so you you mentioned um deficiencies how, how would somebody know uh if they're deficient or what are some of the more, more common i know you mentioned sleep and stuff like that but um any more symptoms or anything else that people would be able to notice to say hey i might be vitamin d deficient i mean you can pretty much guarantee it like i say if you're not taking supplemental vitamin d you, you know but you know I, if i go to a mall and i see somebody that's that's overweight with dark circles under their eyes, bingo, they're vitamin D deficient. You know what I'm saying? And uh, because our foods are so deficient in magnesium, um, even if they're getting, you know, because I, I hear people say, oh, I drink a lot of milk. Well, the problem with, and this is, I'm glad I thought of this. Our foods are supplemented to a degree with vitamin D, but it's vitamin D2, which is ergocholecholesterol, which is actually, much less, much more poorly absorbed and much less effective than cholecholesterol, which is the type of vitamin D3 that mammals ingest. So, I mean, even if you drink a lot of milk or eat a lot of foods that have been supplemented with vitamin D3, I mean, to vitamin D, uh, you could be guaranteed it's, it's the wrong type of vitamin D. So, you know, I, I, uh, you don't sleep well, you know, you have allergies, you get the flu often, you're overweight, um, you feel depressed, you know, you pretty much can guarantee that you're vitamin D3 deficient. Yeah. Have you noticed the correlation between D uh, deficiency and any type of skin conditions or I, we got to be careful what we say because we're on, we're on YouTube and they censor everything, but uh, any type of viral conditions as well? Beside outside of the flu, yeah. Um, I think, um, I've been a lot of people have commented because I never had good skin and I had a lot of zits and stuff in high school. And I, I, I mean, no one ever commented and complimented me on my skin, and I'm getting all kinds of compliments on how wonderful my skin is. I used to have really bad acne scars, and I still have some, but they've mostly gone away. I had a lot of, um, of uh wrinkles or creases even and they're going away um so the effect on your skin and i think that goes back to the gut um because for instance um you know certain autoimmune diseases affect the skin and i think it's all tied to you know cutting out the or reestablishing the proper balance of bacteria fungi whatever in your 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 gut that helps keep your skin uh, healthy. And to me, um, vitamin D affects all the organs, but because the skin is the most obvious to me, I can see how effective it is because I think vitamin D slows the aging process. It affects what are called the telomeres, the end of the chromosomes. And I was involved many years ago, I was on the Today Show and on uh, MSNBC because they took my cells and I was the first person to have my cells cloned. And um, so I'm very, a gentleman named Michael West, he formed uh, several companies, Geron, Advanced Cell Technologies and such. And so he was very much into the aging, you know, slowing aging. And I think vitamin D absolutely slows the aging. And now uh, apparently every seven years, your body essentially cycles through all your cells. You essentially replace all those that you can. And so it's been uh, over 11 years now. So I think I'm like one and a half times through cycling. You know, I think um, my hair, as you can see, is kind of out of control. Call it COVID, lack of haircut. Um, but I think my hair is so much better. I think it's starting to regain some of the color in it, um, you know, which is not really the skin, but sort of associated with it. But I've seen a phenomenal uh, improvement. now. One thing I've been curious about, and I don't know how the answer is, um, but certain, you know, um, sexually tra uh, transmitted viral diseases, um, I, I, I'm curious 
because of its effect on the flu, respiratory tract, respiratory viruses, how uh, vitamin D might be affecting um, or preventing people from getting, um, you know, uh, virally sexually transmitted diseases. But I don't have the answer to that. And that's the thing is there's so much studies. I mean, and people go, oh, there's thousands and thousands of studies on vitamin D. Yes all done at such low doses or poorly done because they don't track the, 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 the uh, blood levels. I mean, they're a joke. They're really, really a joke. There's only one study I know of that used um, high, higher doses. I don't even like to use higher doses because basically I believe the optimal dose is, in my personal opinion, what the RDA should be, okay? Now, one thing we didn't talk about, um, is toxicity. And everybody's like, oh my God, you know, and can that stuff kill you? I think they've done a really good job of brainwashing people to tell them that basically supplements are expensive pee and that the really most effective one, the one that could basically put out the pharmaceutical, put the pharmaceutical industry out of business. And I don't want to put them out of business. What I want them to do is focus their efforts on diseases that are genetic or otherwise vitamin D can't help. But um, I, I believe vitamin D would put the pharmaceutical industry because almost every single disease, in my opinion, uh, especially age related disease is from vitamin D deficiency. Yeah. And, and most of the tests that doctors are doing are not, they're not testing for iodine levels. They're not testing for vitamin D levels. They're not testing for parasites. They're not testing for chemicals and heavy metals. They're not, they don't have any testing put together for the things that actually cause your illness to begin with. Um, so anyway, that's, I think we've covered a lot right now. So if someone was going to, how long does it usually take to start seeing results when you start putting people on the optimal dose of 30,000 IUs? Uh, it takes a couple of weeks. Uh, for me, it was like nine days. I went, I wasn't, hadn't been sleeping well. I went home. It was light outside, closed my eyes. I woke up, it was still light. I was really upset because I thought I hadn't slept. It had been 12 hours and I had slept. You remember as a kid where you go to sleep and you wake up and it feel like a minute? That's what I had. Now, I, I don't have that all the time now. I mean, we're adults and too much other stuff's going on. But um, I'd say a couple of weeks, you should start noticing a difference. Now, here's the one thing. Um, when you start taking it, some people gain weight. And I remember the first time that happened, I, it took me a second to figure it out. They're like, oh, doctor, this isn't helping. I've been weighing myself and my weight's gone up. I'm like, wow, why would that be? Why? Uh, okay. I said, well, how are your clothes fitting? And they're like, oh, well, looser. I said, because muscle mass is three times denser than fat. So, you know, it takes, it takes a while, but, and I've noticed you know, even four years out that I was still like almost weekly noticing a change. Now, 11 years out, I just noticed, I think I've hit, it's kind of like tuned everything as much as it can tune it. And now I'm aging, but at a slower rate. But I think for a long time, I, you know, I can't say I was getting younger, but I don't think I was, I was certainly getting so much healthier and I don't think I was aging. So easily for five or six years, maybe longer, I, I think it just completely stopped my aging. And now I'm back aging again, but at a really, really slow rate because the body is designed to last at least 120 years, probably longer. And like I told my patient, I want you to live 120 years and then drop dead, but to be totally healthy. I mean, hopefully live longer, but you know, the point was not this slow decline where they're always ill. Got it. When you when you recommend um, your patients to use vitamin D, do you have them do it with food? Do you have them do it a couple times a day between meals? What's your recommendations? It's like I, I tell all my uh, patients or told them all is, you know, your body better than anybody. So figure out what works best for you. A lot of uh, the peak effect is around 15 hours. So some people find that if they take it at night it keeps them awake. Other people find if they take it in the morning, it puts them asleep. I personally take mine at night and I believe it helps me to sleep. 
but I've never had problems sleeping. Um, but I, I think it varies. Now, um, I like the capsule that's suspended in, uh, let's say, avocado oil or olive oil, you know, some type of non-seed oil. And I think that's probably enough for its absorption, you know, as far as that goes. But some people um, think that uh, perhaps eating with a fatty meal or something is beneficial because it's fat soluble and it'll, it'll help. Some people think that if you're going to take vitamin K2, which is a whole different subject, um, is to take that, you know, let's say in the morning and take vitamin D3 in the evening or vice versa, because they might interfere. I, I don't know that that's true or not, um, but just uh, that might be a question that might come up in somebody's mind. Yeah. So tell, tell us a little bit more about K2 since we have a few more minutes. Like what, what is the, do you always tell people to take, take K2 when they're um, vitamin D deficient? Here's the thing is, I think when you're first, let's say you're older and you're starting to take vitamin D3, I think your body's been racked. You probably have atherosclerosis, you have probably have osteoporosis. And those are the two main things. I mean, there's many. Uh, if you have periodontal disease, you know, um, vitamin K2 is super, super effective. If your teeth are loose, you're having dental problems, vitamin K2. So I think when you're first starting this, let's say you just became aware of all this, you probably need vitamin K2 because your gut produces it, but your gut is probably not producing very much or producing it very well when you first come to vitamin D because your gut's out of whack. So as far as that goes, I think it's probably important. Once you, you get going and you've got everything back online, do you need to take it or not? I don't know. I don't think it's critical. People act like, oh my God, if you don't take vitamin K2, you know, you're gonna get hypercalcemia and la 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 la. I'm like, chill. Vitamin D incorporates by itself calcium in the bones. Okay. It's not just absorption or blocking excretion uh, or mobilizing it from the bones, okay, as far as that goes. So Anyway, back to vitamin K2. Vitamin K4, I think if you take 45 milligrams a day, there was a study out of Japan, but they use calcitonin also, which is the body's, you know, uh, effects incorporating uh, uh, calcium into the bones. Um, but they treated a whole lot of osteoporotic women with it. And 45 milligrams of vitamin K2, and that was the one study where they used 25,000 units of vitamin D3. Uh, and they were able to have a significant impact on osteoporosis, okay? So I think the vitamin K4, it can be very effective for osteoporosis. Now, vitamin K7, I believe, and this is my personal opinion, I believe it can reverse uh, uh, atherosclerosis. I believe it can. And I think I've seen it myself, okay? because I was getting some issues with my feet. I'm paraplegic, so that um, makes it um, makes me a little bit more prone to some diseases, especially, you know, I was ill for so long. Um, but I think the, uh, the, the vitamin K2, the MK7 type can affect uh, atherosclerosis as far as that goes. So um, I think initially when you're first getting on this, that taking vitamin K2 uh, can have benefits and be beneficial. And even after you've taken a while, if you still have some of those ailments, you may have a genetic defect. I mean, this is one thing we didn't talk about. 30% of people and 40% of obese people have a genetic defect in the vitamin D receptor and or the intercellular machinery that activates it. So those people are probably going to need more. And the other ones, um, there's a site called Vitamin D Wiki. And it has like every article ever written. It's written by a friend. It's maintained by a friend of mine, Henry Lahore, Dr. Henry Lahore. And he probably has every study ever written about vitamin D. And he talks about, he has a list of all the diseases that are caused by vitamin D deficiency and, um, the, or, and or the defect in the vitamin D receptor or the intercellular machinery that activates it. So, so, um, so if someone wants to get your book, we'll put a link to it um under the video and you can buy it on amazon uh what what how can people get more information from you if you want to let them know where to go website social media channels stuff like that all right i have a facebook group it's a private group and i let everybody in until they start trying to sell something um but it's vitamin d advocacy i have a website uh which is uh vitamin d blog.com 
and I've, I've got hundreds of blog postings there. I don't, there's uh, currently, there's no, I'm not selling any vitamins. I'm not selling any courses. Sign up isn't required. Free information. Because for me, it's super critical. And every penny I use from book sales is put back into trying to get the information out on vitamin D3. So this is not a money making. It's actually a money losing proposition. And I'm actually in the process of, uh, should come out soon, having my book. It's been translated in Spanish and it's just uh, getting the final uh, edits and such. It should come out soon uh, in a Spanish version. Yeah, well, thank you for everything that, you, that you've that you done and everything that you continue to do. We're talking, I, I've personally met Dr. Judd in person. He came by the office and he's a wealth of knowledge and somebody who was medically trained that converted over to the natural medicine pathway when he saw the power of it. You know, when he was talking about prescribing antidepressants and everything, the antidepressants are again, just a band-aid and those are mostly filled with fluoride and fluoride calcifies your pineal gland and then iodine also will help remove that those fluorinated compounds from your system. So, you know, I've been a fan of vitamin D for a long time and, and spent years and years trying to develop. And actually we were the first company in the world to develop a fully certified organic non-animal based vitamin D that's non-GMO non derived from lichen with special cold processing and extraction techniques. And anyone that's watching this video, we're going to give out them a 10% discount. It's just, it's, it'll be in the description below. Just check it out. It's the D3. Living, high vibrational D3. There's a lot of synthetic versions out there. Like Dr. Judd was saying, you know, when they fortify these cereals and stuff like that, it's usually the D that's a synthetic form of D that doesn't really work that well in your body. So Anyway, I just want to thank you for coming on today. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge with everybody. Um, we always, we wish you the best in all your endeavors and hopefully we can work to get more information out to the public on the strength. I think D actually finally came back up to the forefront again during this whole time period where um, we've had different types of pathogens that we've been exposed to. So it is a it is a very very cost effective solution just like zinc and that people can take and that most people are deficient in and just to say one last thing you know i agree with you 100% i think that magnesium is another mineral that the majority of people are deficient in uh, when you have vitamin d deficiency you have magnesium deficiency you have iodine deficiency uh, those are supplements in boron boron as well boron deficiency is rampant so yeah. Um, get your really good organic vitamins, continue to cleanse your body, learn, eat healthier food, eat organic. Any last thing that you want to say? Yes. Get a copy of his book that he's showing there right, that, right now, the optimal dose. Um, you can get that on Amazon and read more about it. Share the information with everybody that you can, yeah. because this is something that we can all share to protect everybody. I know, I mean, I get calls every single day and I know everybody watching this video knows somebody who might be having difficulty with their weight. Sleep is an epidemic right now. I mean, I very rarely do I talk to anybody who says they're sleeping for eight hours through the night. I mean, they're sleeping with their laptops and their cell phones next to them. I mean, it's just like sleep is, uh, is actually one of the biggest epidemics right now. And another thing, you know, the number one health complaint in the world for the last probably 10 or 15 years is pain. And uh, so many pe people suffer from aches and pains every single day. So, I mean, you have vitamin D that addresses like the top five or six health conditions out there. So get your vitamin D. We're not giving medical advice. I agree with 30,000 IUs a day. That's about what I take. I think that's a perfect optimal dose. Any closing words from you, Dr. Judd? Oh, I could go on for hours. Um, <laughs> uh, bore everybody to death, but um, I just really, really appreciate everything you do, Dr. Group. Um, you know, we need somebody out there to bring the right products out there, the, the ones that, like you say, high vibrational energy and that, um, you know, not polluted with all this other stuff, because what's the point of taking something if there's so much negative attached to it? 
that it basically neutralizes it. So thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, God bless and, and um, have a great day. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody.